My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Good morning. Carlo and I have decided to make an escape from Positano for a couple of days. We have not been out of Positano together since <laughs> probably last year sometime when we went to Ischia in June last year. Carlo has two days off work and we are going to drive to Rome and spend a couple of days there. Carlo has gone to the little delicatessen in Monte Petrusso to get some sandwiches because we're probably going to arrive at Rome around about lunchtime and we have an appointment at two so we won't have much time to eat so we're going to have sandwiches in the car on the way down and I just need to sort the car out. Let's go and get Carlo from the delicatessen. Già preso i grischi. Sì, adesso stiamo facendo il panino. Ok, we have to have Ben. Classic. Mm. Ok, it's unusual. Fresh mozzarella. Ho appena fatto colazione, ma mangerei già il panino. No, devi aspettare. Non so, non so. Bene. Sì, sì. Look at that. Everybody loves the end of cornettos because they're full of chocolate and now they sell them without the ice cream on top. <laughs> Such a good girl. Andiamo! Yes. We are stuck behind the slowest police car in the world. It's gonna take forever to get to Rome at this rate. Turn, 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 turn. Ma <laughs> fatto finta! <laughs> so the police turned off and now we have the biggest, slowest lorry in the world in front of us that we can't get past. We're never gonna get to Rome. And we have arrived. Our hotel is amazing for the price we paid. I don't know whether they've lowered the prices because of COVID, but this room, 50 euro, Look at it. So we have a very glamorous bed. Lovely decorations all over the walls. It's a big room. And look, this was waiting for Holly. Not the travel bowl, but the water bowl and the mat. Over there waiting for her. We have a lovely big marble bathroom. Anyhow, we've just got time to eat a very quick sandwich and then we have to go out and meet our friend. What is out the window? Looking down onto the breakfast courtyard. This is the indoor breakfast area. So they have the buffet, and if it's nice, you can eat outside. We 
are outside Baron Wooden Room at the Piazza di Spagna, the Spanish Steps, and we are waiting for Mitra. Mitra is an official Rome tour guide, and in my opinion, she's one of the best. And she's going to take us on a walking tour of Rome this afternoon. She should be quite easy to find. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I honestly feel like I already know you. Yeah. I know that. I know it's I lived in Rome in 1990. I don't even remember what year. 1994, maybe, for three and a half months, and I know nothing. I can drive through it, but I don't know anything. I never explored, and I'm very ignorant about that, time, even though I have lived there. In your defense, the fact that you know how to drive through Rome is one of the most Romans. Oh, yeah, I was really proud of that. In fact, on the way here in the taxi, I was like, I know we're going to that way. If you would have known where to eat then, it wouldn't matter today, because it's yeah, changed it's a lot. Changed, yeah, it's uh, changed, yeah. And there are people that live here about 30 years and still don't know anything about Rome, so I mean, it's nothing unusual. Okay. The historical center of Rome is like a sea bar, I like to compare it to. Okay. We have the Spanish steps on the one top left and the Colosseum swings to the right. Yeah. And in between, we we funnel down with the Trevi de Pantheon. Okay. And so we go, this is what we call the cluster of the historical center Perfect. of Rome. And so it's very close, everything is not as far as it looks on the maps. People tend to think maps look very daunting. Yeah. And you discover that it's a five, ten minute distance yeah. <laughs> between everything. Okay. Rome is a city that in her center is incredibly dense. And then as a big city, you're very expansive. So pretty much from any point where we're setting now in the Spanish Steps, you could drive one hour in every direction and you'd still be in Rome. Okay. So we're going to start with the Spanish Steps. Okay. I'm going to move you slightly here so we can view the steps better. <laughs> Come on, Holly, my love. Okay. I'm not going to show you the whole tour because I want you to do it um, but I'm just going to tell you little bits of it and every now and again Mitra is going to tell you little bits of it. One of the things she's just told me which I found fascinating is that a big part of the San Pietro, the Vatican, was made from pieces of the Colosseum. fountain which isn't the first fountain to be placed on this spot right here it's actually the second one so the word trevi comes from trevie trevie three roads or a crossroad and in crossroads in ancient rome they were protected by the goddess trevia romans believed that the crossroads were haunted and so in order to get safe passage they would give her a coin to get a clear passage and to travel safely. And that's what a lot of people believe is the origin of even throwing the coins in the modern fountain today. Ah. That's where it comes from. Ah, I didn't even knew that. Amazing. I'm standing here and I'm going to insert a photo from rather a long time ago before they stopped you from climbing on here and swimming in there. When I was eight years old, I had a little paddle here. This line here marks where the floodwaters arrived in 1870. 
it's not just a river that floods, it's the sewer system that floods. So the sewage would be pushed up on the streets and this is also what people can build on top of the flooding destruction and Rome keeps rising up in height, not just because of wars and fires, but because of this. So that was the last big flooding and then we built levees on it to prevent the water from flooding, but we still almost flooded Rome, 05, 07. Wow. The water covered the uh, bridges those winters with the rain. Incredible. I don't know this one. Carlo ordered a coffee granita with cream. That's not what I was expecting. I just got a boring pot of tea. <laughs> So here you can see what I mean about the layers of Rome because if you look at the Pantheon, you see it looks like she's sinking, yeah. right? But the Pantheon is where she's always been, but the Rome is rising. So here when you go back in front, you're missing stairs going up to the Pantheon. So in this temple area, the temples behind, they're already underground. That's why this church back there is called Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. Ah. The St. Mary on top of the temple of Minerva that was there from the 5th century BC. Right, so they're all underground. So was the temple of the Egyptian goddess Isis in the back, also underground. But Pantheos means all the gods. This was the hall of, home of the gods, the temple of the gods of the gods themselves. And there is one specific thing that saves this from being destroyed in Christianity. And what that one thing is, you'll have to come to Rome and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely not at all like I remember it. But Raphael, who was born in Urbino, in north of Italy, had always said that if he didn't die in the north, but he died in Rome, Raphael then wanted to be buried in the Pantheon. Now, this is centuries before we have kings in the Pantheon, or before we move the bones of the people in the catacombs to the Pantheon. So, no one was buried in here. Did this stop the Romans? No. <laughs> they decided that if Raphael wants to be buried in the Pantheon, then by God we will give him the Pantheon. And so what they do is that they just simply march in here, take out their chisels and their hammers, come in here, they hack a hole in the wall, and they shove his casket, which is a second century sarcophagus, right into the wall. And there's an inscription on the lid that reads to you, roughly from Latin, that while Raphael was alive, Mother Nature feared that he would outdo her, and now that he is dead, Mother Nature fears that she may die as well. When I was 21, I worked in Rome for three and a half months. I lived here, I worked here. I was very good at driving around the city, but other than that, I didn't know anything. I never bothered looking into the history, learning about the buildings and the monuments. I had no idea. And so, this is why this weekend, we've decided to meet up with Mitra, and she's such a good guide. She is absolutely in love with this city. She knows it so well, and she knows the history so well very very intelligent lady she has two degrees um, she speaks three languages completely fluently and I think it is worth every single penny to do this tour with her she has told us so much stuff and it's so interesting stuff that we would never have known about all these other monuments that are being built out of pieces of the Colosseum and the waterworks and how there's three different types of fountains I never knew you could drink out of a fountain at the Piazza di Spagna and I did, I went and filled up my bottle and after that I saw about five other people go and fill up their bottle after they'd seen me do it. So I think a lot of people didn't know that and she is giving us so many little pieces of advice and it is making this city come to life. You understand so much more if you actually learn about it through somebody like Nitra. I'm going to leave all her details down below and you should follow her on Instagram too because she gives little mini history lessons a lot on Instagram um, and it's wonderful. Che adesso la 
Having stop it, stop it. Hold on one second. Oh dear. We are having a food tour today with Chef Fabio. He is Mitra's husband, so it should be another fun day. I am still. <laughs> what is the matter with you, you silly little puppy dog? Everything is okay. Holly gets a little bit. A little bit worried when we're in somewhere new. It takes her a while to relax. I had to hand feed her this morning because she, she won't eat. Um, so we're meeting him at 11 and we're going on a food tour. I'm still full from dinner last night and uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to join in the food tour. So Carla's going to do that for you and I will concentrate on filming it. <laughs> I think that's the best way to do it because I don't think I can eat a thing. Are you alright now? Would you like to go out for walkies? Walkies? Hotel Via San Pio is where we're staying. It's on the Aventine Hill, um, so it's just out of the centre of Rome, but that's what I wanted. So yesterday we got an Uber into town, and that was 17 euro, and then last night we just got a regular taxi from the Piazza di Spagna back to the hotel, and it was only 12 euro, so it's cheaper to get a taxi than an Uber. Um, it's a beautiful hotel. It's all these lovely old villas, and um, the breakfast was really great. The room was big and spacious and warm. Now we are checking out and we are off to meet Chef Fabio. with Chef Fabio. We are outside Roscioli, one of the oldest bakeries in Rome. We're going to go inside and Carla is going to try one of the pizza breads with mortadella. Let's go see what they've got. Two people at a time. Hmm, this could be a problem. Mm. We are starting very well. Yum, yum. <laughs> oh, this is what I like. Yummy! And then just in case that's too greasy, just go a little bit further up. No, no, I've just got a cappuccino. No. Prego! What's the name? No. Prego! This is something typical of Roma. Pizza con la mozzarella. Ovviamente non è la mozzarella che compra il mercato. Anzi, ma non è la mozzarella. Questa è una classica romana pizza 
Full of mortadella. Vuole anche due supplini, usciti di cardinali. Se l'ho toccato poi se lo prendo. Va bene, come cosa? So I have just had a fantastic idea. I wasn't going to join in the food talk because I'm still full from last night. But if I get all the food and I get it all to take away, I can get a collection going and by the time we get home tonight, we will have a bag full of food to eat. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save all of my food for later. Hello, you. Questa parola non la conosco. Cosa? Norcineria. È il norcino praticamente che loro fanno la produzione del maiale. Loro hanno i loro maiali e fanno la produzione del maiale per cui tutto ciò che vedi i prosciutti, il salame, eccetera, sono tutta produzione loro. I conservanti qui e derivati del latte non ci sono, per cui è tutto naturale, per cui è tutto essiccato naturalmente, ovviamente col sale. Allora, per me è uno dei migliori posti se vuoi comprare tutto questo. C'è del, del parmigiano e loro lavorano con parmigiano stagionato 42 mesi, è il top che c'è, è fantastico. Qualsiasi cosa che vedi qua dentro non c'è, conservanti... Siamo da quando ce l'abbiamo, da 7 anni. This little bar is called 081 Cafe, it's right next door to the salumeria that we just went into and this is a traditional Napolitan cafe in Rome. It is um, every morning the dolce, the sfogliatella and cornetti are brought down from Naples, just driven down. It's only a two hour drive and inside there's the traditional Napolitan music playing. Okay, questo, questo mi devi far capire che cosa. Allora, sono tre carni, quindi praticamente è del macinato rilavorato ed è aromatizzato al whisky ed è molto molto buona. Questo, questo è il salame, un salame di fegato, di fegato esatto. questo? Sono le coppiette, sono le coppiette di pie romane, di maiale. Sì. Mangio perché mi piace. Quindi We have finished our food tour and we've spent the last three hours sitting in the cafe with Mitra and Fabio just chatting away and um, we've had a great time with them. But now it is already gone four o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to slowly walk back into the centre of Rome to the old forum and have a quick look around there and then I think we're going to have to start heading back to the hotel and heading back to Positano because Carlo has to go to work tomorrow. I am currently in the middle of the road. There's the Colosseum. Look how empty it is. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Dai che cadi. Let's go home. I just want to give you a glimpse of the street that our hotel is on. It's so pretty here. We are just walking back to get the car where it was parked overnight and we're going to drive back home. It is about a three hour, three to three and a half hour drive from Positano to Rome, which I've done many, many times. Very pretty.